Wham! Bam! Bembe! Hey, you guys, what's up? It's episode 21 of the Powerful Nerdcast, and I'm here with Corey. And Hi there. We would love to break down uh, E3, and we also want to talk about this week's manga and some other things. So, yeah, welcome to the podcast, Yeah, everyone. it's good to be here again. Uh, episode 21, that's a pretty big deal. That means you can actually take this episode out for a drink and not get arrested for it. I think that's pretty mm. awesome. Yes, and I'm amazed we're already immature. at 21. You know, it's <laughs> yes, but it'll definitely be an immature experience. But, mm. yeah, you guys, it's really because of us this is possible, and I just want to give myself a thank you for this because if it wasn't for me showing up every day this wouldn't have been possible us not <laughs> you but no seriously thank you guys for tuning in every week and giving us your questions and stuff we will have a few viewer questions today most of them from one of our uh, very good friends uh, blue sakaga blue he gave us a lot of big questions you're my boy blue which are, uh, actually going to be pertaining you're also the name of a raptor it is the na- yeah <laughs> that, that you know uh, we talked about Jurassic World last week, and I think we even yep. said this as we were leaving the theater, that scene, uh, final bit of the movie, where there's uh, the raptor named Blue, and he was running away at the very end. It was a she. It was a she? Yeah, because he was the alpha male of the group. Uh, She's the, uh, I see. She was I keep forgetting female. in Jurassic World if they did the whole, like, you know, all the, the dinosaurs They didn't even female. really get into that, did yeah, they? Yeah, they didn't, you know. No. I just assume maybe they're just sort of regulating them a little bit more and, you know, doing what Dr. Malcolm said, which is just, you know, looking up the dinosaur sort of skirts. skirts. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, as soon as Blue was running away, like the first thing that popped in my head was just Will Ferrell's, you're my boy, Blue! Yeah, and as the credits rolled, I turned to you and said that. It's just funny. It's just, it was weird. We were totally on the same page about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing, let's get into E3. Yeah. So, week, and it's still technically going on. Technically, you know? There yes. could be an announcement today or tomorrow. I doubt it, though. I'm pretty sure all the companies have shown off their games. I'm going to tell you what, this year it felt more like a technology show in a lot of ways than a video game show. Yes, there are a lot of new great IPs. You could even say that it's most of it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with Microsoft's, uh, is it Halo or Hollow Glasses or whatever they are? Uh, The Hollow thing. It's these. Hollow Goggles? Yeah, for uh, Minecraft. Well, that's just the application they showed. Mm -hmm. Which which I I said in my E3 video, I think, is a, uh, a genius way of showing off that technology because Minecraft isn't a very demanding game in terms of the graphics and what it looks like. No. So this is a great way to be like, look, here, blocky game, it'll work with the technology, we'll apply it to something a little more complex later on. Yeah, and it, uh, the blocks have different like things, but if you think about it, when you zoom out, you're just like, okay, I can look at a thousand blocks right now, and a computer can handle that no problem. So it's really great, uh, like you were saying in your video, uh, it's great to show off that technology because it's really only processing like, I don't know the number, but like a thousand blocks at once. Mm -hmm. And what it is, if you guys haven't seen it, it's these goggles you can put on and then you can look at a flat surface like this table. And then all of a sudden it can become a world of Minecraft where you're like looking at it uh, like from third person and you can like grab it and move it around. And the real point is it's different than like Oculus Rift because you see through them and they apply... uh, things in the outside world around you. So it's not like it takes you to a new dimension or anything like that. It's not like, you know, like a hologram where, like, people can actually see it. You have to be wearing these goggles to be in it. But two people can sort of, like, do this at the same time where one person is playing and the other person is sort of observing. Like, someone could be exploring the world of Minecraft while you actually manipulate it. It immediately made me think of, like, what about a badass like rts game like imagine battlefront but one person gets to be the commander and is like looking or, at the battlefield uh, imagine uh, you remember that old game called black and white yes you now can physically be god yeah yeah i remember that the mm-hmm. peter molinax uh uh game man mm-hmm. that guy over fucking sells his shit but we won't get into that i was <laughs> yeah. so pumped about black and white it wasn't half of what i thought it was gonna be black and white wasn't that great what was that other one that came up spore spore was yeah. that's done by someone else mm-hmm. that's done by the guy that made the sims mm. uh but uh that was built up too, and mm-hmm. that's a classic case of being built up because he liked his his creature building engine, and then he forgot to make a game to go along with it. That's true. Yeah, that's that was pretty much the whole game. Which it was kind of cool, just going on YouTube and looking for like all the creations people made. Everything that's, from that's Naruto it. to Venom, you know, mm-hmm. has been created in yeah. the Spore Maker. What were we talking about? We got off course. E uh, three. Let's go E3. back to Microsoft and their, their. It's called Hololens technology. Yeah, but immediately I thought of like an RTS. Imagine like there's a Starcraft, but you get to do airstrikes. So like one person sitting there dropping bombs on the battlefield while you're in there running around shooting, you know, and like mm-hmm. playing like Call of Duty. And imagine how that could like trade off into some really cool sort of games Mm -hmm. i mean you can literally communicate with your entire team and seeing the entire battlefield like Mm -hmm. that that will change that type of gameplay yeah it could be really cool and it's just uh showing uh uh augmented reality in real life versus you know your oculus rift which takes you somewhere Mm -hmm. and they're both like that technology if it exists with goggles it'll exist in in glasses in 10 years for sure Mm, for people who wear glasses though that's a bummer 
Well, I know you're, you're a guy that doesn't want to wear glasses yeah. and glasses, but and, they and get, that's another reason why I'm, I'm, of course, already wary of Oculus. Why I'm not really like jumping on the bandwagon as much. Uh-huh. For people who wear glasses, already having to wear something over your glasses is kind of strange. It's not the most comfortable feeling in the world, and even when it's something that's giving you a little bit of breathing room, well, it's just in, it's in strange the future, you're looking through two lenses. In the future, you'll put them on; they'll give you LASIK automatically. That's true. That's <laughs> true. And I've thought about LASIK before, but I don't know. I don't trust it yet. You don't want you don't want to lay down in a chair and watch a guy like scalpel away layers of your cornea with a laser beam. Ugh, that's like some James <laughs> Bond shit. I don't expect you to talk, Mr. Corey. I expect you to die. Like, I don't want that shit happening to me, but I mean, I've seen the results of it, but then I've read that some people end up getting screwed up by it. So. Yeah, but that's everything. Probably if they're like, what, what is a common injury thing in ACL when they're fixing your ACL or something mm-hmm. in your knee, they fuck that up sometimes. All that just time. happens, mm-hmm. you know, but sometimes probably most of the time it works out Mm -hmm. so the chances are you're like 90 percent good when you get your late eyeballs lasered i mean i'll be ready for (laughs) vr technology then and hopefully it doesn't turn into a whole sword art online where we all end up getting stuck in a game world but you should that's uh, a completely different type of technology you should show people how asian you look without your glasses on oh god i hate that world um (laughs) i don't know why he says it but my my eyes have like an automatic reflex where they kind of just start to close and i can't really help it yeah he's making this um, up guys he's really i'm really racist. not like this he's is racist. literally what happens to my eyes when i close them <laughs> um you know so that's just the way it is but i like my glasses when my glasses them. give me a lot of identity i've had them for years so yeah i love them um but getting back on track let's go back to microsoft so we had uh the minecraft technology which was definitely i think the most surprising thing to be from honest the show. i don't remember there's so many things like what else do you want to like look up what uh, microsoft yeah had? Uh, you know some of the big things about microsoft shows that they were showing off some of their major ips of course there's the brand new halo coming out halo 5 which i kind of like stopped paying attention know? to halo mm-hmm. because man i really want an xbox one for their halo connect collection game mm-hmm. but that's like it I just just give me that. And that's an interesting prospect. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, Microsoft mentioned they're going to start doing backwards compatibility for select games. Um, do you think that they're actually going to allow people to play their old Halo 1, 2, and 3? Or they're going to say, no, you have to purchase the Master Chief Collection? From a business standpoint, it would be much better for them to buy yeah, the Yeah, but game. in the same way, doesn't Nintendo do that with their VR console? You know, you have their to. virtual console. Yeah. Um, in some senses, yeah, but I mean, a lot of those games that you download are like they're not even compatible with the system. But why don't they have a cartridge slot for their old games? <laughs> a cartridge <laughs> slot for the old games? That's too expensive. Yeah, I know. that's a whole other piece of hardware. That'd literally be like duct taping a Super Nintendo to a Wii U. It just it, it wouldn't work. People make them custom all the time. I mean, yeah, but it just. <laughs> but then that means you got to start doing it. That means NES, SNES, Game Boy. You might as well go I ahead and throw that in. I want it full of holes. N64, GameCube. I, I just mean, want to be shoving things in those I mean, slots all day long. If it's, if it's any long. consolation, the Wii U is backwards compatible with Wii, so you can play all of your old Wii games on it, but you can't play GameCube games, which is why I'm really glad I kept my GameCube, because... I usually keep all my Nintendo systems. Yeah. Uh, I actually GameCube got rid of... GameCube is huge. I don't remember GameCube. GameCube. GameCube was the shit, man. I think yeah. it was one of the most underrated Nintendo systems of all time. Yeah. Just, it, it came out at the same time as Xbox and PlayStation 2 had already been out for a year, mm-hmm. so that already had such an established uh, fan base. And back in the early 2000s, I think there was no question that PlayStation was the winner of that generation. The like, first they just, gen? They just dominated. Yeah, well, everyone mm-hmm. they didn't see it coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, just they had such a great selection of games. So many games. They never Even stopped coming I was out. playing Sega Saturn Virtual Cop way before PlayStation. Sega Saturn. You know, I don't think I've ever known. You're the first person I've ever heard. Did you own a Sega Saturn? I owned one. I owned wow. one with Virtual Cop and two guns. Ooh, what, else, what else did you have on that system? Because I barely uh, remember That anything. taxi game. Crazy Taxi? Yeah. Was that on it? Okay. Yeah. Now, do you mean Sega Saturn or do you mean Sega Dreamcast? Oh, I mean Dreamcast. Dreamcast. No, I had a Saturn and I had Virtual Cop. I never had a Dreamcast. Okay. Yeah. I, I knew a couple people that actually had a Dreamcast. No, I, never, I think I I'm wrong. I just played Crazy Taxi on a Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I mean, I Dreamcast had. blew me away when I saw it originally because yeah. it was like, it came out even before PlayStation 2 and had PlayStation 2 graphics. It, yeah. It just, they didn't have enough games and enough momentum. And then when PlayStation 2 came out a year later, it just dominated. It was more like the Dreamcast just sort of got everyone ready for the PlayStation. In some ways, yeah. Like and it then, prepped them. But that was an, it was a revolutionary system. It had online play. It had... Mm-hmm. All these big titles to it. It was the first time a Sonic game went into 3D, which was a good thing and an absolutely horrible thing at the same time because in many ways it sort of killed the series. Uh, every Sonic fan's pissed off after hearing that. But, uh, I mean, can you really think of a good Sonic game that's come out over the course There's of the last There's that one years? where he has that sword and you can just push the button the whole time. Ugh, that's the Wii game. <laughs> uh, Wii always ends up getting snubbed. Um, but here, we, we keep going back in these little video game memories. There was... Uh, 
Uh, Microsoft's conference, like I said, they had the backwards compatibility, but it's only for select games and ones that they can actually approve. So if you have a huge collection of 360 games, there's no guarantee you'll get to play them all, but it's a great move because it's sort of like sticking it to Sony because they are not doing backwards compatibility whatsoever. They're not going to try to do it, and they're not even addressing it. When people ask them about it, they're like, we've already said, it can't work. It's not a backwards compatible system. This system plays PS4 only. And uh, this was sort of a great jab at them, because I remember, I think it was last year, uh, when Sony was uh, sort of jabbing at Microsoft about the whole like online and everything, like your system won't have to be online all the time. Yeah, like yeah. these other guys. Basically, that's what they were doing this year. They basically said, we're not going to charge you for games you already own. What was uh, uh, Sony's jabs back at Microsoft? I remember they had a few this year. Like, uh, this year, uh, you know, I actually didn't see too many. I'm sure uh, they, there they were are really some. game focused this year, which I think was really smart on their part because they showed off some great stuff. And why talk about my, Microsoft at your conference? Exactly. Yeah. Don't give them free exposure. Yeah. Uh, it worked the previous year because it, it did wonders for the system. They ended up selling like crazy and ended up being the best selling system of the holiday season. Um, but uh, Microsoft this year, they, they tried to focus on the games a little bit more, but really it was just more social media interaction, all that crap. Gears 4 is coming out, which, did you see the gameplay demo for that? No. Yeah, it was. it's, it's more Gears. It's just okay. more of the same. But people um, who are Gears heads are going to be happy about that. Oh, yeah, they're going to love yeah. it. I mean, but, I mean, just the whole demo they showed off was just, it was all black and blue and colorless and just big, bulky soldiers just running down corridors. <laughs> and, you know, basically it was an excuse to show off a lot of physics. Like, there was a lot of physics of, like, wind and showing how it affects trees and everything. And it was a big tech demo. That was the whole the point of that tree backgrounds, Corey. Yeah. The tree backgrounds. Mm. Yeah, that's what yeah. I care about. Yeah. Nah. So it I wasn't very fun. Um, but we got to see some of the classics. Like, they still have the chainsaw gun and everything. But it was just more Gears of War. It was just more of the same. No new Far Cry or anything. I was kind of no, hoping for like that. And, and they didn't suitor. even do a, There is a new Call of Duty coming out. They didn't even, like, show that off. That's usually, like, one of the big headliners. Yeah, they did. They, they showed they, it. They Microsoft showed it did? I don't know what they at their at their conference, but there's a new trailer that came out during E3, okay. uh, where you get to see the different player types, okay. which I think they're trying to focus on, like sniper assault. Mm-hmm. You know, they're trying to build uh, player types uh, mm-hmm. and, or something. But that was never the style of Call of Duty. I may have misinterpreted that trailer because you could always just pick any gun, mm-hmm. but maybe it affects like your avatar look now or mm-hmm. something like that because they had like small, fast snipers and then like big bulky assault guys. Mm-hmm. So like maybe they're trying that. I haven't played. Call of Duty in a long time. Ever since they started getting those skeleton suits attached to them and that future shit, I mm-hmm. just, I don't know. I stopped paying attention. Yeah. As soon as I stopped, that's when my older brother jumped on ship. You know, really? He's obsessed with all the newer ones and everything. I think the last one I played was <sighs> Modern Warfare 3? I think it's 2. 2 or 3. It was one of those two. Uh, where we would, you know, one. where we would fucking noob tube people and come in, you know, and put... like, stop using the grenade launcher, Corey. <laughs> stop running into it, you idiot. Yeah. Like, I hate when people try to just it's in the game. I can use it. Um, yep. And I love the noob tube. Those things are so, <laughs> it's so satisfying to do that, especially when you get a cluster of people together. Yeah. And you, w- um, you whack them. But and... uh, have you ever heard of the uh, studio Rareware or Rare? Yeah, I know Rare. OK, uh, they did announce something really cool for Xbox. It's nothing new. Well, they did announce one new game, but uh, they announced this big rare collection, which is going to include 30 games from their history. And some of those games are like Banjo Kazooie. That's and, a big uh, one. Battle Toads, the original one from wow. uh, NES and everything, because they created Battle Toads and uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day and a lot of other games. So it's going to be like a cheap budget game for like 30 uh, budget price for 30 games, and Whoa. that's like. The first game, I'm like, I kind of want an Xbox so I can play all these old games. Yeah. Um, but still, they also announced a brand new game, uh, Rare. The you know they're the creators of like the big old Nintendo games, like Killer Instinct, Donkey Kong, and all that stuff. They didn't create Donkey Kong, but they worked on. Some they of produced them. it. You know, they basically created what is the modern version of Donkey Kong. Yeah. Exactly. But since it's a Nintendo property, Nintendo owns it, so they took it you know for themselves. But they were the team that made it. Exactly. But yeah. they're working on this uh, other brand new uh, big open world pirate game. Which is I don't know if I very, saw that. It's very stylized. I think it's called Sea of Thieves. Okay. And it just I saw it and I was just like, mm, it looks like a way less impressive version of the Assassin's Creed Black Flag game. Like yeah. it, it, when I say stylized, it kinda has like a cartoony look. It's like cell shaded or yeah, something. Yeah, but it's not like it's not completely cell shaded, but it's also just the world seems kinda empty and it just seems like I did all this before in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and it's not doing anything unique or better than that game did. I never played... Just, what's the uh, last uh, Assassination Classroom, or whatever it's called? Assassination Classroom <laughs> game? Uh, last it. Assassin's Creed. You know, I forgot. I've lost track at this point, because there was the one game that took place in France, which I believe is called 
Assassin's Creed Revolution. I'm probably wrong on that. Viva La were, Revolution? Viva La! Yes, <laughs> there was a, a spin-off game, which was a PSP game, I think was a side-scroller game, where you play as a Chinese uh, female assassin. Okay. Which is cool. That setting seems like it would make for a great game, but they just turned it into a little side spin-off. Um, there's all those other spin-offs where you, like, team up with other assassins, so I've lost track of Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I didn't even, like, you know, I remember back when they showed Assassin's Creed, like, way back in the day for the very first time. I never imagined Imagine that it was going to blow up into a franchise like this. I thought this was going to be it's like, like a one-off. It's like a show that, or it's like a video game that comes out every year now. Yeah, it, it is. It's pretty much an annual release. They're like, oh, okay, now he goes to France. Mm-hmm. Now he goes to outer space. My favorite thing about Assassin's Creed is just seeing the E3 trailers and just the. They're tra- always good. And the trailers uh, that don't have gameplay. I rather see the cinematic ones because I think the gameplay in Assassin's Creed. Who is makes the best okay. trailers? Ooh, that's I tough. already know the answer to this. Uh, it's probably going to be uh, the guys who do what are they World of Warcraft? Yeah, Blizzard. Yeah, Blizzard. Blizzard they do, they know the how best. to make good trailers. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, you know Konami's been getting a lot of heat lately. Uh huh. Um, you know because of all the controversy around Metal Gear and the fact that Konami's just not doing so hot right now. Um, Why I thought is that? the new. Uh, I don't know any about that. That's Explain. a dude. That's a topic for a whole nother video. There's been so much Konami hate, and this is going to be from what though? I don't understand. Where's it coming it, from? It has to do with the creative decisions with Hideo Kojima, the creator of Metal Gear, and the actual people that run the company. And uh, Hideo is not happy at all. And okay. uh, this this is he says it's his last Metal Gear. He says that Bull at the end. Shit. He says that at the end of every Metal Gear. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. But he's um, probably so tired when he's done with these games. He's like, "Fuck it, I need like six months off, and I'll start making another one." <laughs> I mean, making a Metal Gear is making a movie, and then it's some more than that. Yeah. It's 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 an epic story. Like I don't even know how you write that thing down, mm-hmm. you know, and then you much less make it a game. But the uh, the trailer for the new game, The Phantom Pain, looked really good. No gameplay at all, but it's all Let me, cinematic. Uh, uh, inquire on one more thing. So the owners of Kuna- Konami or whatever are he, they're pissing off the maker of Hideo Kojima. Yeah, why? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know the specifics of it. Like they're taking creative control over things. A little like? bit, yeah. Okay. And, you know, and considering this is supposed to be like the magnum opus. Of Metal Gear yeah. is probably another reason why uh, Hideo Kojima is so upset about this. Yeah, because this is his baby. You yeah, know? he's been. This has been his. This might series. be his last one. How old yeah. is that guy? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look. I mean, he's been in the game for quite some time. Like he, he worked he on made the original Super Nintendo version of this game, right? Uh, no, no, no. He, 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 well, his team helped make the NES version, but it was originally released on a system I believe called the MSX which was like a like a home computer console and uh, that was never released in America okay. but then they ported it over to the original Nintendo uh, let's see what's going on here with old Kojima-san Kojima-san and, uh, and Konami Did you see the uh, uh, death battle of Sam Fisher versus uh uh, Snake? Oh, Snake would kill him. Snake butchers him. Spoiler of course he alert. He's the CQC master. I know. That's a, that's another reason. I, I can't wait to see what they're going to do. This is going to be the first next-gen metal here. And uh, just the the direction behind it looks really freaking good. As well, it, it looks does. powerful. I know that story is going to blow me away. I still cannot believe when I played Snake Eater and I was climbing up the damn ladder and the song I know. plays. I remember, like, <laughs> you, you, you called me about that. I was like, and it's, I, and it's, I was just, it's like, just the most crazy moment. I don't know why. I was like, okay, and then I came over and then you like, you're like, Corey, play this section real quick. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm just crawling up a ladder, crawling up a ladder, and then slowly you start to hear the music come yeah. in. And I'm like, I was like, I get it. Um, I do appreciate it a lot more now. That is a very atmospheric scene, and that was probably a really clever uh, covering up a loading screen. Probably, you know, because, uh, you know, I don't even know because I just kept my thumb there the whole time. Do you think it it just keeps going or do you have to like physically make him? Go? It has to go. Well, yes, you have to make him go. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, I it think probably wasn't a loading screen then. Maybe. I think they're like, fuck it. Make the ladder. Yeah, like last there's a forever. lot of games that use really clever uh, loading screens. Like I love uh, the Metroid Prime series. Uh, when I don't you go really to a brand it. new area. You go in these elevators, and when you go down the elevator, they show you, like, various camera angles of Samus on the elevator, checking her equipment, getting uh-huh. ready to go into the next area. And it feels like a cutscene because it doesn't say now loading or anything. It's just a quick wah, wah, going yeah. to the next area, and then she arrives. Lights are, like, swinging by. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that was a really great way to do that. Uh, Resident Evil games, remember the originals? Yeah. Whenever you open a door. Oh, and it, it would show the door. The door going, That's a clever loading screen because one, it's building the tension. Yeah, you know, you're scared to go into the next room because those doors. And are you can't just see into the next room. No, you just hit this button and you see this cutscene. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Which is why they need to go back to that style. I know it's archaic. Yeah, and it's just it 
probably won't swing with modern audiences, but after replaying the remake on PS3 and just playing that again, it's still better than any modern Resident Evil that's come out. It is still so just scary as shit and tough, and the puzzles are still good, so... Maybe in the next one. I'm surprised we didn't see anything. And from you're Resident not supposed to kill year. all the zombies. Mm-mm. You're really not supposed to blast all the zombies no. you see in that game. I mean, you can, but there's ways. If to If you're play playing that. the GameCube version and you're playing as Jill, you can use an unlimited rocket launcher glitch, so you don't uh-huh. have to worry about that. But oh, really? they got rid of that in the PS3 version. I was kind of angry about that. Oh, really? Whenever yeah. I wanted to just have a casual playthrough, I would and just play start as Jill. blasting. Yeah, because yeah, within uh, about 15 minutes into the game, you can get a grenade launcher and get unlimited ammo for it. Like over a thousand rounds and you don't even need a hundred to beat the game so you just go around boom 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 i walk into a room and i just start firing in random directions yeah. and kill everything like all right let's get the uh, the key and go to the next room <laughs> you know that's exactly what it's like um but i am uh, reading a little bit of this a lot of it also has to do with that uh game that was going to come out called silent hills which was sort of like the it's reboot the... of the entire series and Kojima i've never got and... into that it's crazy. Um, you should watch some Let's Plays of that because there are people who play the demo version of it. It's uh-huh. a genuinely scary experience. And uh, it looks like it could have been like the next like good step for the series. And Kojima and his team were working on it. And then they just canceled the game outright. And, his, and he uh, wasn't very happy about that either. Um, let me see here. The other thing is that guy's a goddamn master. Why are they canceling games on him? If he says he can make it, he can make it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, he... It's like a damn tool album, okay? It just takes a while, but it'll come out. You know, just wait. Did you ever find out how old he was? Uh, you gave I, I up didn't. On that. I didn't. He's he's not a very old fellow, but also it seems to be that uh, his team uh, after this game is out is going to be dissolved by Konami. Like they're done with his production team. So uh, that and and that's so stupid because you know next to Metal Gear, what other like big Konami franchises can you even think of? Uh. That are live volleyball? Mm, that's not. No, that's not it anyway. Uh, no, that's not. Co- that's that's Team Ninja or something. Yeah, I, th- I think it's Tecmo. I'm thinking. Tecmo. I don't know. I, I might be Who wrong, Who makes though. Ninja Gaiden? Uh, the, the, I think it's Team Ninja. They do it. Team but Ninja. The original creator isn't working on the series anymore due to even more controversy with him years ago. He hasn't worked on a Ninja Gaiden in a while anyway. He's working on a new game for the Wii U, which is a third-person action game where you play as this... Uh, white yakuza member who's covered in tattoos who kills ninjas and shit it looks why not there we so go so ridiculous and why it's on wii u i don't know but bring it on god knows the wii u needs some more games because it is sinking <laughs> fast because this e3 presentation for nintendo just you know i liked some of the games i'm a huge nintendo fan i'm, I'm very uh you're a fan vocal of about splatoon that. splatoon was yeah good. um I, and i you know i still haven't picked up splatoon i probably will next month because just I gotta play it. It looks like so much fun. And even, uh, not just the multiplayer, I really want to play the single player because I've heard it's really awesome and it looks really fun. And uh, the people who worked on Mario Galaxy worked on it, so I definitely gotta try it out. Um, But Nintendo this year sort of dropped the ball a little bit because they opened up their presentation, which is not the big onstage presentation. It was a pre-recorded digital event. That's what they call it, the uh, Nintendo digital event. And they opened up with Star Fox and just... It was awesome. Everybody was excited. You're like, man, if they're going to start with Star Fox, what are they going to do after this? Yeah. Nothing. They're going to do a lot of stupid <laughs> spin off games. They're going to focus on a lot of 3DS games that reuse assets from old games. They're going to sell Amiibos, which is still smart for the company because that, that shit's making money. You know, I never thought I'd buy Amiibos. Own Not, three of them now. You own three. All right. Uh, and I'm probably going to buy more. Oh, yeah. I already have a few in mind. I want a Ryu really bad. Yeah, I want to get Ryu. They announced Duck Hunt Dog, Falco. Uh, there, there's going to be an 8-bit Mario for Super Mario Maker, which oh, looks cool. like the old NES sprite version of him. Yeah, yeah. And instead of the uh, normal base, it looks like he's hopping out of a green pipe and has a little thing on the side, Super Mario Brothers 30th Anniversary. And that one's probably going to be really rare because it's going to be like a special edition uh, yeah, Mario yeah, for Amiibo. Sure. And I'm going to have to get that. When you scan that into the Super Mario Maker, you actually can use like a big giant version of Mario in the levels. And uh, th- that game is going to be great. So Star Fox, Super Mario Maker, really good stuff. But that's like it. Like that's there's it. There's nothing else. I didn't watch like, it, so I don't uh, know much about the Nintendo. Yeah, one. I mean, there, there's a few 3DS games that are cool. There's a Zelda spinoff. Yeah, it's okay. There's a, uh, a Mario and Luigi Paper Mario game. What about game. the Metroid spinoff? Oh, God. <laughs> um, this has been the most controversially ridiculous game Nintendo's done in years. It's uh, the first Metroid game that we've had in five years. It's uh, been, I think, eight years. So the years. last one was that bitchy one where she took orders from that Marine. That yeah. Hated. See, that's how infamous the game is. You're not a Metroid fan. You no. don't own a Nintendo system. And even you know about the shitty infamous yes. of 
Metroid Other M, which I still own uh, because I'm a hardcore Metroid fan. It's is the type, gameplay fun? The gameplay is fun. You know, it's not perfect. Like, uh-huh. it's not the best control scheme. Uh, and this, it's just the story sucks. It's just so bad. And you can't <laughs> skip certain things. Like, there's a lot of stuff. Even after replaying You shall it, not pass this cutscene. Exactly. <laughs> it's so freaking annoying. And just think, it was the first game, too, to give Samus a voice. Like, before she was the, uh, Strong the silent, silent protagonist. Yeah. You know, you never heard her talk. And Did that she even was, grunt? Or like, ugh. Oh, like, yeah, Metroid Prime, she could get, get hit. You'd hear, sometimes scream. Whenever you die, you actually hear her scream. And then her, uh helmet turns off like a like a flicker like okay and you would hear her scream if you go up to like a wall and blast it at point blank range uh the light will give off a reflection you can see her face in the mask okay like there's a lot of details in those games were made by retro who claimed they were going to be at e3 this year they even put out a tweet nowhere to be seen and after the whole metroid debacle and them not being there people are like what the fuck is going on so there's this brand new metroid game it's called metroid prime looks great federation force looks great metroid prime which is to assume it's connected to the metroid prime series that's stupid because metroid prime has been killed if you've played that series so to give it that subtitle is just stupid and they're just slapping it on so that they can make a little more money this game does not have samus in it you play as these galactic federation forces guys which are basically just glorified space marines they're master chief and they're not the typical Master Chief. They're, like, all chibi-eyed and cute and chubby <laughs> and stupid-looking. And they're going to be teaming up in online multiplayer matches and fighting against monsters. And that is not what Metroid is. I fucking hate it when people say that Metroid is a shooter. It's not a shooter. It's a freaking adventure. It's not a Tuma. It's a freaking action adventure exploration game where you discover a massive world and the secrets within it and when you can't get to a certain area you go and look somewhere else you, you might shoot find that something. thing and it doesn't work so then you go shoot this other thing and yes then it does work but it's That's not a shooter do. yeah it's not <laughs> it's not a shooter yeah there's combat in the games there's some awesome boss battles really yes. memorable ones but for the most part 90 percent of the time you're just running around looking for things. Yeah, like, you probably it, it's doing. an explora- exploration game. Mm-hmm. Also, I mean, uh, well, that that brings me up to another good point. Okay, so Metroid, I know you're you're not happy, Corey. Yeah. You're just I'm not just happy. Did you? I showed you this <laughs> the YouTube video on Nintendo's page. Yes. I think it's got about four thousand likes right now, but it's got fifty thousand like uh, dislikes. Down, down, fifty thousand down. 50, downs. 50, down. Every comment, not every other, not the occasional comment, everyone is complaining and bitching about this game, and they're telling Nintendo, we don't want this. We've had to wait five years for a Metroid sequel. One, this isn't a sequel. It's a spinoff. Two, the last good Metroid game that came out was eight years ago. If you really want to say the last good one, it was 11 years ago. It's been nearly a decade since we've had the true sequel to a real Samus adventure and it's annoying because what's going to suck about this is that this game is, is going to get Is that where they had so- Dark and Light Samus? There was uh, Metroid Prime, Metroid yep. Prime 2, uh, which introduced Dark Samus, who is uh, actually the Metroid Prime herself. Yes. Uh, and then there's Metroid Prime 3, uh, which is the end of the trilogy. And that was that. They had a D- uh, DS spinoff, which the DS spinoff, which came out in 2006, its graphics are just as good, if not better, as this brand new 3DS game. And there's actually, like, comparison videos out there, (laughs) side by side. They look damn near the same, and the other one at least lets you play as Samus and use her abilities like you would in the Metroid Prime series. It's a lot more respectful of the actual source material. This game is a Metroid game in name only. It has nothing to do with it. And if they'd have just dropped the Metroid Prime, or even the Metroid title, and just called it uh, the Federation Forces set within the Metroid universe, everybody would have been fine with it. But by calling it a Metroid game, you're just going to piss off the fan base. And there have been petitions, over 10,000, 20,000 people signing to get this thing canceled under 24 hours. That is how passionate people are. And Nintendo is just dodging every question. Every time the reporters go up to him and they ask him about it, they dodge all that shit. What do you think about the fans' reaction? Well, uh, you know, we're not really thinking about that right now. We're just talking about Federation Forces, our brand new multiplayer game. Like, they don't want to (laughs) freaking... And I hate that. I really do. Because if there's one thing Nintendo does not need right now, it's the fan base backlashing at them. Because they're the only ones keeping them alive. 
Yes. You know, people like me who buy nothing but Nintendo games. I buy a Nintendo and I only buy their games. I don't buy any of the shitty, uh, you know, shovelware titles or any of the crappy sports games or half ass games that they release from the other companies. It's all about Nintendo. And this is the. Pretty much. One of the biggest insults to Metroid fans. And uh, as a huge Metroid fan myself, like my favorite game of all time in my top five is a game called Super Metroid nothing's been as good as that since. And that game came out in fucking 1994. Was that GameCube? Hmm? Was that GameCube? SNES. Oh, okay. Uh, The Metroid Prime Trilogy on GameCube and Wii, that was the next best thing, but after that, it's just been kind of downhill ever since. And my biggest fear is that the backlash from this game, and if they release it and it doesn't sell well, will give Nintendo the message that they don't want Metroid, we don't want to make Metroid anymore, so let's get rid of the franchise. We're I don't think they're going to see it that simply because they're smart enough to know they actually just want, you know, what GameCube did again. I hope because Nintendo has abandoned a lot of their fran- Like, lately over the last couple years, it's been Mario, Zelda, and Mario and Zelda. Like, that's it. And Smash they, Bros. And, and Smash Brothers, which also has Mario and Zelda in it. Yep. Uh, just, they've barely been focusing Mario on... Mario Kart. Mario Kart, Mario Tennis, Mario Baseball, Mario Soccer... Mario Party. Freaking, there's so many Mario games. And I'm okay with Mario. Mario's a freaking classic character, and he's definitely keeping the company alive. Same thing for Pokemon. But, like, I haven't seen a new F-Zero game in over a decade. Uh, we're finally getting a new Metroid, and it completely sucks balls. Um, Star Fox is finally coming back after years, and it's definitely a step in the right direction. I really hope it's going to be good. Uh, but just a lot of their other classic franchises, they just don't care about, and it's just it's disappointing. They at least they got the virtual console, you know. They're fucking that up too, though. Really? <laughs> They're not doing good with the virtual console. Like they never they release like maybe one virtual console game a week, but they never release anything good. Like there's this one game, and this is something that's been pissing me We're off. We're gonna call this podcast Corey bitching about yeah Nintendo. about <laughs> Nintendo. I'm sorry I'm getting all passionate about it, but this is a great place for me to like let it out. Um, there's this one game that I've been like, I, I, and I go to Nintendo's Twitter every week and I, and I say the same message. Oh Where the God. fuck is Metroid Zero Mission? There's this one virtual console game, which is a Metroid Game Boy Advance game, which is a remake of the original Metroid game. Okay. Which is freaking great. It's definitely one of the best side-scrolling Metroid games. And uh, it's been out on the virtual console in Japan and in Europe since fucking March. We don't have it. Why don't we have it? I will give you the money. What is the problem? There's nothing to translate. It's the same as the European version. Just give us our motherfucking games. Give us our virtual console games, our downloads. We will buy them in truckloads, but they're not releasing them. They could release five classic games a week, and they're not doing it. And I don't know why. Like, they're just completely ignoring it. And it's not all of Nintendo. Like they It's don't, America. They... Nintendo of America is getting fucked Every single week. They don't give a shit about us. All they want is our money and how many more Amiibos they can put like in, in our <laughs> pockets. Like That's it. Europe, Japan, everywhere else, they get the hookup. Hell, that brand new game, Yoshi's Woolly World, yes. comes out in a week and a half in Europe and Japan. We get it in mid-October. There's nothing else to translate. Why are we having to wait until the late fall near the end of the how year? How much would it cost to import that? <sighs> It, too, it doesn't matter. I think the Wii U is... It's not... Oh, it's region locked? Yeah, it's region locked, so it doesn't matter. I can't buy that game. Otherwise, I there's a possibility I'd consider buying the European version, but it's a shame because since that game's now coming out in October, it's going to get buried by the PS4 and Xbox One games that are coming out. It's just... It's bad marketing, and they could sell more Amiibo. Those Yoshi Yarn Amiibos... God, I'm afraid when those are going to come out because I'm going to have to fight with moms and fucking Toys R Us <laughs> to get those. You know what's sad, Christian? No. no Ever since tell. I started collecting Amiibos, oh. I now go to Toys R Us twice a week. Mm. Yeah. That's a little creepy. Usually Monday night <laughs> and Sunday night. Day in a row because usually they get their shipments around those times. And it's always the same. I walk in. They don't have the Amiibo I want. I walk out. Yeah. Every single time. Amiibos are addicting as hell. Be careful. I'm not getting into and it. And I haven't even opened them yet. <laughs> How much would it cost to get a Wii U and Smash Bros? Uh, you could probably get one for about three fifty, depending on the deal you get. Uh, that's a lot of money. To yeah, the game is fifty. I mean, the system is about. Well, actually, um, is there a bundle thing? There are bundles. You could get a Splatoon bundle. You can get a Super Mario 3D World bundle. There might be a Mario Kart bundle. I want a Smash Bros. bundle. I don't think you know. They haven't released a Smash Brothers bundle. 
Why? I don't know. Probably because the game itself is selling so well on its own. They can just separate it and make exactly. more money. And I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be bad to want to get like a Splatoon or a Mario uh, bundle. I mean, I got the uh, Zelda Wind Waker one, which is a, a 32 gig black system. It has all these like little golden Zelda decal designs all over it. It looks yeah, really nice. It. Yeah. You know, I love that system. I hate that little iPad thing, though. It's not my favorite. It's, you know, my biggest fear with the Wii U gamepad is that I'm going to break it. Yeah. That's my biggest, like, every time, and that's why I bought, like, the extra, it's called a Wii U Pro controller, it looks kind of like an Xbox controller, Yeah. Um. but uh, every time I pick that thing up, like, I have, like, a ceremony that I do with it, like, I have to be really, <laughs> like, when I set it down, because um... if you break it, you can't just go to the store and buy a new Wii U gamepad, you have to send your Wii U gamepad into Nintendo to fix, and that costs a little over $100, so. Well, I'll tell you straight up, sending your shit into a company to have it get fixed, like, because I crashed one of my drones, I sent that thing off almost three weeks ago and i haven't even really heard much from them and like they're like up to eight weeks i'm like so it could just disappear for like eight weeks Mm -hmm. can you imagine not that you need your game pad no not that i need my drone but Mm -hmm. like eight weeks to get your shit fixed that's crazy Mm. don't you think like no it's insane yeah uh, i don't know they should have really thought about that a little bit more like maybe selling extra game pads or or maybe like a special version of the game pad or something because if you don't have that the game pad you can't turn on the system you can't use it it's required for that system and that's gonna suck for people like me who like to save their old nintendo systems because when we store it storing that controller is going to be a bitch because it's a screened controller it's got a weird awkward shape where I place it has to be really safe, and I'm makes me glad that I saved the box for my Wii U because I have all the containers in there, so I'm going to be able to put them right back where they're supposed to go. But it's not a very good storage system. But it does come with a nice little uh, you know dock that you can put the controller on to uh, charge. So it, it doesn't everything. have to like lay down. It doesn't always have to lay down. So that's easily the best thing about it. But like you know, whenever you know I'm playing Mario Kart with my friends, you know I, I always give them the regular controllers. I use the gamepad because nobody wants to use it. They say it's too big. It's too awkward. It hurts my wrist after it's, a while. It's a good controller controller though it works well it just it feels weird because you're used to you know getting nice and tight on the controller on this yeah. one it's just it's out here so it just it seems strange uh but it does work really well for some games it's just like i said it's it's for gile i don't want to break it so <laughs> it's a big ipad with controllers on but the yeah side so of it. you know nintendo sucked this year simple as that they you know star fox is the game for me of e3 but that's because i'm a nasty big star fox fan mm-hmm. and this is the first real one we've had in years all vehicular combat it's going to make use of you can play on the you know just Play normal Star Fox, look at the screen, blah, 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 blah. But if you want more precision aiming, you look at your gamepad and you see a cockpit point of view. Oh, with like actually, a reticle and stuff? And you can see the reticle. And you can do things you never did before. Like, you can, uh, like, fly over an enemy and not even move. And what you can do is, like, let's say there's an enemy right here on the ground. You fly over it. Instead of using looking at the TV and trying to, like, fly down at it and fire, what you do is you look at your gamepad, you tilt it a little bit, and you can fire straight down as you fly over it. So oh, it's wow. just like, boom, 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 boom. You could never do that before. So That's true. And then you just look right back up and start playing. The R-Wings can now transform into these mechs, which kind of look like these, like, robot dinosaurs. I want And see uh, that. there was a mission. I haven't in seen the, this video There was yet. a great Corneria mission. It's the very first one. Uh, it's kind of a riff, because this is kind of a remake of Star Fox 64, where they fight this big, giant battleship, like something out of Independence Day, and they uh, start destroying parts of the ship, and it starts falling and crashing to the ground. I remember that. Like, they'll and, flash red as you shoot them, and then yeah. they'll die off. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, but this is, like, it's mad. Massive, it's giant, like it literally is like a big like spaceship, like warship. And uh, there's two different ways you can take it down. And this kind of goes back to Star Fox 64, where usually every single mission had two to three ways you could complete it. Yeah. And if you did it just the easy way, it would say mission complete. If you did it the actual real hard way, it would say mission accomplished. If you do the mission complete, you just destroy all the outside of the ship, it breaks. If you do the mission accomplished, you destroy a part of it, you fly into it with your R-Wing and then transform into your mech run in the middle and destroy the core in a boss fight and it completely destroys the boss from the inside. And this is cool because it also shows there's going to be branching paths where if you do the first way where you just destroy it from the outside, the boss actually rockets and escapes into space. If you destroy him from the inside, it completely destroys him. So if you do the normal way, you're going to see that boss again, which would happen in the old Star Fox games. Yep, if, yep. You know, they would sometimes reappear and be like, hey, you didn't finish me off last time. And that means there's going to be branching paths. They're going to go back to, like, the map system where you can, like, choose different paths to go to. Or, like, Wolf wouldn't have his buddies if you shot him down. Exactly. And Star Wolf will be returning. Of the, uh, the second level featured uh, the character of Pigma, who's a member of Star Wolf, returning. Yep. And you have a big dogfight with him in front of this space colony. 
uh, it's 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 going to be Star Fox. Is the dog, dogfight system a little more advanced, or is it still circle like the loop or the loop with the spin to change? Um, they, they, it, it's a lot more intuitive and a lot more faster now. Like you still have okay. you can do somersaults, you can do the uh, you know just the complete turnaround. Uh-huh. Uh, you have of course the barrel roll returning, um, but that's pretty much it. But you seem to you have more control over flying now. Like you just, there's you, more depth to it. I yeah, guess you could a say a lot more. Yeah, um, but it's still classic Star Fox. You know, it, it it feels like an extension, like the first real sequel. To Star Fox 64, which that's another one of those in my top 10 games. So hopefully this one will break in. It looks fan freaking tastic. Fan freaking tastic. But that's Nintendo. That's, dude, what didn't we cover? Uh, uh, Sony. Sony. Uh, Sony who knocked it out of the freaking part, man. I thought the Sony's, uh, uh, first they have their own VR headset. I forgot the name, mm-hmm. but they even have one now. Yeah. And uh, which, again, goes back to my point that VR is coming big. Mm-hmm. I know it is. And I really hope it does because mm-hmm. I want. I want fucking to go like imagine if someone has this cool camera where you could like walk through the streets. They already have three dimensional cameras like mm. that record everything, uh, you know, at the same time, kind of like if you had five GoPros making a globe, yeah. you know, and then like put that and you could walk down the streets of Italy or something, mm. you know, with just some goggles. I just think that's so cool. And uh, then they also had that uh, Dawn game, Rising Dawn or what uh, was Horizon it? Zero Dawn, which yeah. is not the most creative title. The game itself, however, I, I yeah. love the style of it. Cause Looks cool. It's kind it feels like Half Life, in a little bit of um, a way. In some senses, yeah. Yeah, it has mm-hmm. a well. Not that I guess in the only boss battle way, you kind of remember those those big spider things that you'd have to take down. Mm-hmm. That kind of looks like kind of their robot dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. But it looks like she was trying to collect that green stuff on the back of those deer. Yeah, like, like maybe that's, that's like a, the health or something, mm-hmm. or like the uh, food. I think they use like yeah, either they use like the parts from these like mechanical animals. Uh, you know, for brand new weapons mm-hmm. or for sustenance, you know, there, there's going to be something. There. That is weird. Why yeah. would you harvest robot juices? I don't know. It's that what they is... did. It's what they did. And uh, I know you never played it. It was a Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, uh-huh. which is the uh, the Raiden action spinoff game, which is yeah. freaking awesome. I but hope they not really a that. Metal Gear game. No, it's, it's not a Metal Gear game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a but, it's, but then again, it's not called Metal Gear Solid. It's called Metal Gear Rising. Metroid Prime Federation Forces. <laughs> You fucked up on your title. Metal Gear did it right. because it should, I, What about if it was just Metroid Federation Forces? That'd be even better. Just yeah. getting rid of the Prime makes it better. But yeah. get rid of the Metroid, too. Okay. You know, because at least in Metal Gear Rising, there are Metal Gears. You fight them multiple times yeah. throughout the entire game. Probably in the beginning the of last, the game. Of cor- yeah, the first level. You yeah. fight a Metal Gear Ray. It's insane. <laughs> uh, the final level, you fight against a giant four-legged freaking Metal Gear, and then you fight this big senator on top of it. It's crazy. Look it up later. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's maybe the greatest final boss battle Nano I've seen machines. in a long time. Yeah, Nano Machines, son. Um, <laughs> God, one of the greatest endings ever. Um, I lost track of what I was saying because I was talking about Metal Gear Rising <laughs> Revengeance. We were talking about Horizon Zero yeah. Dawn, which is the brand new... Uh, it's a post-apocalyptic game. But it, it so tricked me because it's not like the other post-apocalyptic games where everything is Fallout brown, 4? Drab, Fallout 4, everything... You know, I like Fallout a little bit, and I saw the trailers for it, but just everything still just looks brown and boring. Well, but- it's it's it's... A, a different take on Skyrim. And yeah. that's why it's got a big audience. People mm-hmm. love those action adventure games. Oh, yeah. You know, where you can choose where to attack, mm-hmm. which is great. That's my favorite part of it. Yeah. You know, you their choose system. to blow their face off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom, and their heads explode mm-hmm. or something like that. But I mean, with this Horizon game, like the open world is gorgeous. It's so colorful and bright, and the greens and the reds. The looks of the cities, which have turned, like there are like waterfalls coming out of buildings and everything. Like it just looks yeah. so gorgeous and inviting in a world that I really want to be a part of. And I love that it's post apocalyptic, but everybody looks like they're like cave people. Like they're dressed like they're uh, you know like cave like, women like, and cavemen. Yeah, yeah. You know, they have spears and stuff, bows and arrows, and they're hunting against robot dinosaurs. It's just so extreme and ridiculous. Doesn't make much sense. And that entire tech demo was great because you get to see it's not just going to be dinosaurs. It's pretty much if an animal existed, there's going to be a robot version of it because she's hunting deer, and then these big T Rexes come out. Yes. And there's also the uh, the big long necked looking robot dinosaur at the very end of the trailer. There's a big metal eagle which kind of looks like Hitler's golden eagle from Kung Fury. Yes. It comes out and starts attacking so it's going to be an extreme game i really can't wait to see what they're doing with it and it might seem a little cliche but i like the fact that there's going to be a strong female lead you don't see them too often and she doesn't look like she's just a big sex symbol you know we've really evolved since Lara croft and yes even Lara croft appeared this year she had a huge tech demo for the new game uh, tomb raider i think tomb raider, tomb raider uncharted tomb raider <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but they showed that off in the uh, the Microsoft Direct because it's going to be uh, an exclusive for Microsoft for a little bit. 
Yeah. Yeah. Not not for uh, too long. The money runs out eventually. Mm-hmm. But again, <laughs> <laughs> but again, that's very similar to the the Gears of War demo. It's just you know running through a scripted sequence of you know avoiding an avalanche. We've seen that before. It's technically just hitting X or triangle. That is all it is. A it's pushing B. the stick and that's why I hate when people call Assassin's Creed game a platformer. Yeah. It's not a platformer. You just press the run button and push forward, and he automatically does the jumps for you. Mario's a platformer. When a gap comes up, he doesn't automatically jump over it. You have to time your jump appropriately, and if you don't, you're fucked. Yeah, that. But uh, I also think I that had a uh, huge argument about Mario versus <laughs> Assassin's Creed platformer with my good friend Ben. Well, technically, you are platforming in the sense that you're going up and down platforms. Mm-hmm. But they the the emphasis is not on how you platform. The emphasis on how, is on how you sneak up and kill people. Mm-hmm. The, the goals are completely different. Yeah, very. Your goal different. of Mario is to get to the end of the level, and mm-hmm. how you do that is up to you. Mm-hmm. But the goal of assassination, or assass- assassination classroom, I keep fucking saying that, <laughs> uh, Assassin's Creed is to sneak up on people, and uh, it's the crowd interaction aspect. They're almost completely different games. Calling you them- know, I just thought of a really great cosplay. What? Uh, Koro Sensei dressed as an assassin from Assassin's Creed. That'd be cool. That'd be really awesome. But he looks like a bad, like he, he's, his costume's really bad because that's yeah. the way he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his weird, creepy hentai laugh. Uh, but yeah, I love Koro Sensei. Um, but yeah, just Microsoft, eh, okay. Nintendo, eh, okay. Sony, they had the Horizon New Dawn. Uncharted still looks unbelievably amazing as it always does. It's very similar to Tomb Raider and uh, Gears, how they had like a big scripted sequence, but they hide it so well. Like, Uncharted is just made so well you can't talk shit. Mm-hmm. Like there's this <laughs> sequence where he's like hanging onto this train uh, by a rope and being swung underneath the bridge underneath it and just avoiding things. It's just so insane how good it looks and you're actually controlling all of that. Like it's not just hit X at the right moment and avoid the object. You know, it looks yeah. like it actually took some uh, legitimate skill to make that happen. Yeah, just Uncharted always Uncharted and Lara Croft and all those games are great. I'm not mm-hmm. really dissing them, but they all feel like those scripted sequences in God of War, mm-hmm. like a game. Yeah, of those. which I think were really fun at first when they were showing off the technology. Yeah. Now it just seems like a little hand holding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's fun. Yeah. And the shooting is good in those games. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't know about Lorecroft. I've never really played mm-hmm. those games. I mean, there is a little bit of, you know, there's a few guns, bows and arrows. And it does look like it is going to be a much bigger, expansive game than just running around in the snow. Like, it looks like there's... Because the last Tomb Raider game apparently was amazing. I never got around to playing it, but everybody was, like, praising it and saying it was amazing. It was, like, the next big step for the system. Laura Croft is no longer just a, a sex symbol. She's actually a you, character you, with feelings. Speaking of that, you should definitely go look up uh, Laura in Trouble on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, that was... I forgot about that until you just brought it up. Yep, yeah. We don't have to bring it up. We'll just let them Google it. And My see advice happens. is don't look it up. My advice is uh, don't listen to me, but if you think about it, you know, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Alleged, allegedly mm-hmm. is bad to look at that yeah so uh yeah allegedly i know that square enix is finally remaking final fantasy 7 which this whole know, fucking podcast is going to be e3 it, it pretty much <laughs> is i never expected it to be but there is there's just so much news uh about e3 this I'm gonna week check our time. And, uh, keep going you know i'm not even the biggest final fantasy fan i even put a tweet out about this um, you know, I mostly like the first four in the series, the ones that were on uh, Nintendo and then some of the ones that were on Super Nintendo. And uh, I played seven when it first came out, but it also came out at the same time as The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And being that I'm a Zelda fan, you a know, Nintendo I definitely head. Yeah. was like, screw Final Fantasy. I'm going to go on a big Hyrule adventure. And it was awesome. Uh, and I tried going back to it a few years later and I played through the whole game. I was just like, yeah, it was okay. You know, I mean, the graphics have not aged well. The translations are pretty terrible, and the story is very confusing at times. Didn't but, you also uh, have someone almost sell you a Final Fantasy VII once when you worked at GameStop? I, they did sell it to me, but I, they got it. Uh, they sold it to me really, really cheap, like an original PlayStation two disc. But what'd you do with it? Oh, I still s- have it. Oh, you still have it? Yeah, I still oh. have it. So okay. uh, I might sell it one day. It's in good condition. Yeah. Uh, they sold it to me for five dollars. They had no idea. Five dollars original Final Fantasy. Se- they didn't know what they had. Yeah. You know, Final Fantasy Seven. So then you ripped them both uh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, she was trying to sell like twenty different games. I was just like, mm, I'll take this one. This one looks okay. You know, just yeah. Final Fantasy Seven. And uh, that was also the time when I sort of replayed the game too. And I just, eh, you know, it was okay. Uh, I know why people like it though. It, it was. You know, it was the first 3D Final Fantasy on a PlayStation system. It was a big deal. 
But this is something that fans have been waiting for for years and begging for ever since they released that movie years ago called Advent Children, which seeing that for the first time in an anime convention was fun. Like, yes. like I said, I wasn't, I'm not even a big Final Fantasy guy, but being in a room with the fans, like you could just, you're grooving on their energy. Every time a character appeared on screen, they flipped out. And from that moment, you're like, oh, they got to remake this. It has to happen. They showed off a tech demo when PS3 first came out at E3 of the remake. And they're like, oh no, this is just a tech demo just showing off what the system's capable of. We're not really making this 10 years later boom we finally get the remake it's going to be coming out i'm not sure if it's this year or 2016 but it's happening and i'm excited like, i think for they're, the first they're time. making that game from like the ground up mm -hmm. like yes it's a remake but mm -hmm. like the approach is going to be really really fresh because mm -hmm. they're not going to just slap some new graphics on it do some voice acting real quick mm -hmm. and call it a day i think they're really put a lot of love into that. Mm, I hope they do. You know, they might redo the battle system, which it's an old school battle system. It's just wait your turn. Yeah. Turn based. You know, lately, uh, Final Fantasy games have been completely changing their battle system. Like a WoW system where you can run around, cast spells and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, they did that for a little bit. Then they did more real-time stuff. The one that's coming out now, which I think is Final Fantasy, it's either 15 or 16. It's the next big entry in the series. It's straight up just a third-person action game with RPG elements. Uh, but it, Like a fable? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. But a little more, you know, it's PS4, so it just it looks freaking amazing. Yeah. Just so incredibly fluid. And uh, that, that might actually be one to look for, because uh, I tried getting back on the Final Fantasy horse uh, when 13 came out, because I was just like, oh, man, this is the, this is the next big next-gen game, and I played through the whole thing. I was like, eh, it was okay. Yeah. You know, like the story was, eh, you know, just, eh, just more of the same, super angsty teenagers saving the world. Uh, <laughs> but that's why I'm hoping they can do something really big with Final Fantasy VII because, I mean, it's it's their baby. It's it's the ultimate game for fans in the series, and it'll finally be a chance for maybe me to experience it, like, and see what people are really seeing, uh, you know, because maybe I'll be seeing it through, like, some new lenses this time. So some I'm new, excited. New goggles. Yeah. Some Google. Imagine playing a Final Fantasy open world with Oculus and fighting against monsters and actually casting your spells. And like, that would be epic. It would be. That would be awesome. You'd look really stupid on the outside though. It, yeah, you would. <laughs> you know, I would love an Oculus <laughs> game with uh, the Metroid series and the Prime series, being Ooh, able to explore. Imagine you seeing things through Samus's eyes and oh, stuff like that. so awesome having the arm cannon actually there to be able yeah. to move it around. And I don't know how they'd make that work, but just being pew, able to pew, look pew. at things and actually explore the world like she does would be amazing. And of course it'd be weird. She's like, hey, I'm playing as a girl. So it'd be really, really freaking strange. Loser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Corey, let's just wrap this bad boy up. We're pretty mm -hmm. much there. We're uh, yeah, the but that's, that's our uh, rambling thoughts on uh, E3 this year. Did you guys have any uh, favorite games uh, from this year's E3 conference? Whether they What's be your from favorite? Uh, Star Fox. Star Fox. I don't even have to think about it. Uh, I really liked the Microsoft technology that they showed off with Minecraft, mm. and uh, uh, I really liked the new Assassin's Creed. It looked good. Mm. So, yeah. That's my favorite. So you guys let us know what your favorites were in comment section below. And also make sure to thumbs up the video, support us with PayPal or uh, our Amazon link. Everything's down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. And until next time, the powerful Nerdcast is out. And Blue Saka guy, I apologize. We'll get to your questions Damn. next time. Damn. Oh, we forgot Blue Saka guy. We completely forgot. But please, leave us your viewer Damn. questions. They're really important to the show. We want to hear from multiple people. We want to hear a lot of different things. Please tell us in the comment section below. Thank but, you guys again. But really, Blue Saka, we like mentioned your name. That should be good enough, right, bro? Yeah.